Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Evelyn of Pink Sheep Design and today we are here to do a yarn review. So this yarn review is going to be of Parfait XL and this is their sprinkles edition. So that's really the colorway that they're offering in this yarn. Um, this yarn, they have solids, they have prints, they have, I think, heathered options where it's kind of a white mixed in with the color. But this is particularly their sprinkles. And this is actually a jumbo yarn. So for someone who loves super chunky yarn like I do, this is a yarn that I have heard about for quite some time but had never gotten the chance to try. So when Premier said that they wanted to send me some of this to use for a project, I was really excited because, like I said, it's been on my list to try for quite some time and I just haven't gotten the chance to do it. So um, when they sent me this, I did decide that it would be perfect for making a pair of my super simple slippers. So these are the little slipper pattern. This is available in my Etsy shop. I'll have the link to all of this in the description. So if there's anything you want to check out more about, you can see that there. Um, but I actually made a pair of slippers using this yarn and it only took one skein of this yarn to do it. So you get 65 yards and that was enough to do this. So this slipper pattern calls for two strands of super bulky yarn held together. So since this is a size seven, it was a perfect um, replacement for um, using the, instead of using two strands of size six, I used one strand of the size seven. My first impression of this yarn is that it is really, really soft. Um, this is probably, these are probably the softest things I've ever put on my feet. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to have to try to work on something to maybe put on the heel and the sole of the foot so that they're not slippery because I am a little concerned that these might be slippery because it is such a soft yarn. Um, but it's a dream to work with because it's so soft. Um, now this yarn is a true Chanel style yarn. Um, you have got the inner, let me take this off so you guys can see. You have the inner strand in here that has all of the fluffy pieces attached to it. Let's see if it will focus in on that for you. Probably not. Um, but if you've used any kind of Chanel or a blanket style yarn, that is what you're getting with this. Now it is going to shed um, off the end. So you can see there is that inner string with the shedding off of the end. I have still not figured out the best way to um, keep the ends from shedding. If you have uh, recommendations or tips or tricks that you use, I've had some people who like to put, just put a little bit of tape around the end. Um, so let's see if I have just some regular tape. I think it's better to use like a, a masking tape or a painter's tape, but I just wanted to kind of show you what that looked like. So if you were to do that, then you have this piece of tape here and then you can cut the end um, and just kind of tuck that into the project. That's an option. Um, and I like to tie knots, so it's kind of hard to see, but I definitely tied two, two pieces of string together when I was weaving my ends in. Um, so that's an option as well, but I still have pieces coming off of there. So if you have any tips and tricks for keeping Chanel yarn from shedding everywhere, this is a shedding yarn, but I do have to say it's only shedding on the ends. So and, until you cut the yarn, I didn't, I wasn't covered in fluff when I was using this yarn. It was just when I went to cut the ends and weave them in that I had the issues of pieces coming off and kind of leaving the end bare like this. So this yarn, let's see, you get 65 yards. It is 100% polyester. Um, it is tested and approved against 350 harmful substances. I do feel like Premier is really good um, about offering this kind of yarn. Let's see if that will focus. There we go. Um, hashtag make it Premier. Um, and then it calls for, let's focus back on me. It calls for an 11.5 millimeter hook. So the only 11.5 millimeter hook that I have ever owned or been able to find, and I know that there are more out there, um, but this is the Susan Bates Luxite hook. Um, it is an 11.5, as you can see up here, 
Um, it's just a plain plastic hook. I started offering these in my Etsy shop for anyone who's struggling to find this size. Now, obviously, we tend to use our 3D printed hooks, so we offer both an 11 millimeter and a 12 millimeter hook in our 3D printed jumbo hooks. Um, for this review, I am going to be using the 11 millimeter, uh, but I know that our ergonomic hooks are an investment. Um, this is a much more affordable option, so if you are just starting out and trying chunky yarn for the first time, this is a great introductory op option. And then if you realize you love chunky yarn as much as I do and need an ergonomic investment hook, these are a really great option. So like I said, this is an 11 millimeter, and that is what I'm going to use for today's review so you can see me working with this yarn. Now, I did want to do a wraps per inch check. So we've got our handy dandy wraps per inch tool here that goes up to super bulky. So anything above super bulky, which is five to six wraps within this inch section is a jumbo yarn. And I do like to check that because sometimes you'll get yarn that says it is a size six, but it seems a little thin. And then when you compare it to the wraps per inch measurement, it may actually be closer to what we would what would be considered a standard bulky five weight instead of maybe a six weight yarn. So we're going to do a wraps per inch now with Chanel yarn. You do want to make sure that you don't squish the Chanel yarn into place. So I'm just going to place it lightly around the wraps per inch tool. Here we go and wrap them right next to each other. And we have got three wraps per inch. So this is definitely a jumbo yarn. And I did check this before I decided to replace two strands of super bulky yarn with a jumbo weight because I had to make sure it was actually a jumbo yarn. If this had been closer to six wraps per inch, which is considered a super bulky, then I would not have been able to hold it single stranded for this particular pattern. All right, so we are going to flip the camera around and I'll show you guys what it's like to work with this yarn. All right, guys, we are going to work a little bit with this Parfait XL Sprinkles. There we go. And again, this is color. I can't remember if I mentioned the color, um, but this is their Fruit Punch color. All right, so like I said, um, Premier Yarn recommends an 11.5 millimeter hook for this yarn. Um, I am going to be using one of our 3D printed 11 millimeter hooks instead. Um, and I believe I used a 12 millimeter hook to make these slippers. Okay, so the good news is the patterned versions of Chanel yarn. So this one kind of has a pattern to it. In my opinion, make it quite a bit easier to see the stitches, um, which is usually the issue with um, Chanel and fur style yarn is that it's a lot harder to see your stitches. Um, some of the things that you can do is make sure that you have good lighting. So if you need to get like a neck light um, or a directed light um, you know, lamp or something that can be very helpful to see your stitches a little more easily. Um, but using something that's patterned like this can help. And you can see here, you can actually see a little more stitch definition than you would expect with some of that fluffier style yarn, All right? So I've just worked my chain. I'm going to work one row of single crochet. And I do have to say it's, it's easy to work with. It slides over my hook really nicely. Um, it's a smooth, a smooth yarn to work with. You know, sometimes when I'm using uh, blanket style yarn, um, so if you think like Bernat blanket yarn, sometimes there's a weird pull because there's not any elasticity to this yarn. Um, but I think it, there's something about how fluffy this yarn is that almost makes it feel as if it does have a little bit of elasticity which makes yarn easier to work with when it's got a little bit of give um, when you're working your stitches. All right, so this is the first row of single crochet. Here we go. So that's what that looks like. 
Let me make sure I'm actually focused on this for you guys. There we are. All right, and let me bring this up a little bit so you can really see. That is what that stitch looks like. So it is, you know, you can see. Here's a stitch, here's a stitch. You can kind of see that bump there for each stitch, but it, it can be difficult sometimes to see, like I said, your stitches when you're working with this kind of yarn. Um, stitch markers are your friend. So if you are working across rows like this, let's see if I have a stitch marker that I can show you guys. So when you're working rows like this, if you're concerned that you may forget or have trouble counting your rows, um, I'm going to go ahead and chain one and turn my work and I'm going to work a row of half double crochet all the way back across. After I work my first half double crochet stitch, I'm going to place a stitch marker into the top of that stitch. Okay, now this way when I come back across this row, I'm going to know where my last stitch was. Okay, so if I had done that back here on this first stitch, then when I work back, I would know where that last stitch was. And I wouldn't have to worry about whether or not I could accurately count my stitches if I know where that last stitch is going to be placed because of that stitch marker. All right, so I'm going to work this entire row of half double crochet. And I do love you know, sometimes I'm not a fan of the size hook that's recommended for a yarn. Um, I'm not the type of person to stick with that. Usually I just go with what um, I, I feel I like to use with that yarn. It may be different from what is recommended. But with this yarn, I really do like that 11 millimeter, 11.5 millimeter, and 12 millimeter hook range because it creates this really dense, fluffy fabric. This is a lighter weight yarn. Um, so even if you're making like a cardigan or something like that, it's not gonna be super heavy, which is great. All right, so I've gotten to the end and I'm going to do two chains at the end of this and I'm gonna do one more row across and I'm gonna do um, double crochet stitches so you guys can see that as well. But with this size hook, like I said, I'm, I'm really happy with the outcome using the recommended hook size for this yarn. And you can see, I mean, I'm not struggling to use this yarn. Um, it's, it's easy, whoopsies, see, I go into autopilot and work double, I mean, half double crochet is always my go-to, so it tends to be my autopilot. Um, but this is definitely a nice yarn to work with. I, I wouldn't recommend it for a true, true beginner because like I said, it, it can be difficult, um, you know, to see your stitches and to pick those out and to keep count. So, you know, I think once you have some experience, um, once you know how to maintain uh, tension, you know, so once you're, you're okay with maintaining a certain tension throughout your project, um, if you have a little more experience with feeling for stitches. So that's something else that, you know, if you can't really see your stitch, you can feel this is where I place this one. I'm going to walk my hands over until I feel the next opening. Um, so you can use your hands to feel for that. But if you're new to crocheting, then you've already got enough to focus on. <laughs> um, and you can see I just got to my last stitch because here's my stitch marker. So I'm going to remove that stitch marker and place my final double crochet stitch. There we go. And there we go. That is a row of single crochet, half double and double crochet. And let me bring it up a little closer for you so you can see. And that's what it looks like. So it is a little easier to see your double crochet stitches because you've got the openings there. Um, but the half double is, is pretty tightly stitched and then single is gonna be the tightest for that. So these slippers that I created are a single crochet only. Um, so you only have to know the single crochet. You'll do some increases and decreases, but that's about it. And then you'll slip stitch around the top to give yourself um, a little bit more uh, closure around the top so that'll stay, stay on your foot. Um, but if you want to check this yarn out, I have got all of this information in the description of the video, as well as the link to the slippers pattern, um, a link to the different hooks that I talked about, as well as to some stitch markers if you need some of those to help you. Um, and also, if you need a wraps per inch tool, we also sell those in our Etsy shop. Um, 
But I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know if you have tried Parfait XL, um, whether that was their sprinkles version or if you tried out some of their plain colored versions. Um, I would love to know your thoughts and I would love to know what you would use it for. Um, please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss future videos, tutorials, and tips. And until next time, happy hooking!